Hey, 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 JK here. I want to thank you for showing Prettier Day with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for football. I am pumped that football is back. Just to finishing up some baseball. Go check that out. And finally getting to football. It's going to be a tense few weeks because we're going to be battling both. Uh, getting to a championship and getting started on a championship run. So uh, there will be dual focuses. But for this first week, I am excited to say we did pretty good. Uh, we'll be going over the teams. Uh, we have four fantasy football teams. We're going over wins, losses, we're going over who did well, who didn't do well for them. We're going over ads and drops and any other particular points of the week, whether it be trades, whether it be um, news coming out. For example, CMC not playing. Like, that was big news and maybe helped me win one of my leagues. Um, but the point is, this is going to be just a recap of how my teams did. Uh, and I'm super excited to go ahead and get started. We're going to be talking about the Deranged Easter Bunny team. Now, this is a team that I have with my fraternity brothers from college. We're excited to get this league going again. And I'm super excited to have won my first week, 179 to 158. Now, it was great seeing some of these guys perform. A.J. Brown on 10 targets. He did pull in five for 119 and a touchdown, so that was good. C.J. Stroud, 234 yards, two touchdowns. And Jaden Reed, who got me 40 points, four receptions, 138 yards, one rush for 33 yards, one touchdown on the ground, one touchdown through the air. Phenomenal stuff right there. He is obviously the go-to guy for Jordan Love. Hopefully Jordan Love is able to make it back in a short period of time because I don't know what his relationship is with oh, uh, Malik Malik Wilkins, Malik Cunningham, whoever the backup is. So hopefully Reed is able to continue his output into week two and so on and so forth. But now we're going to move to the guys that didn't do well for me. Puka Nakua, obviously he got hurt, but he did have four targets and four receptions, so he was doing well so far. Obviously that bond, that relationship, that connection with Matthew Stafford was there and continuing uh, from season one to season two. Also, Travis Kelsey, as usual, overhyped, not doing a whole lot for me, frustrating, but hopefully he becomes a bigger weapon in that offense or continues to be a big weapon in that offense because they lost even more guys. They still have Pacheco, and they still have, or now they do have, Xavier Worthy. Go Longhorns. Oh, I'm wearing orange too, so it's great. Um, so, yeah, yeah, Kelsey, dude, you got to do more for me. And then... <laughs> I'm so annoyed, man. Uh, Marcus Jones. Now, return yards are a thing in this league, so that is why I had him. That's why we didn't pick up Parsons or Watt. Um, you know, that's why we weren't looking at some of these other defensive ends or linebackers who are doing so well because we're looking at return yards. So the ads and drops are going to look a little odd. Speaking of ads and drops, we added J.K. Dobbins, who absolutely took over the backfield from Gus Edwards, the Gus bus, in the Chargers backfield. And then we dropped Taysom Hill. And now we're going to move to the Party Time Party Boys team. This team won 148 to 108. Big game from Jane Reed, as usual. We already talked about his stat line. And then Tyreek Hill was arrested and then came back to produce a seven reception, 130 yard game with a touchdown. Now, something we could have done better to improve the amount that we won by was start Xavier Worthy. We did not start Xavier Worthy, and that was very frustrating. I was saying they weren't going to do well against the Ravens defense. So, why would I start them? <laughs> Well, Xavier Worthy is the fastest man in the entire NFL, according to the 40 time at the combine. And the other two misses we had this week were from the Jaguars offense. Evan Ingram, one reception for five yards. Thought you were supposed to be getting a ton of targets. You were supposed to be pelted with targets from T-Law. Didn't happen. And Travis Etienne, outtouched by Tank Bigsby. Huh? Did, did we pick the wrong back? What? No, we didn't. ETN is clearly the first and second down back and the receiving back. Bigsby is the third down back, short yardage back, goal to go back. So just hope that ETN gets the score when the drag wars are between the 20s. Once it's uh, closer to the goal line, either way, 
not to be pushed back into the end zone or to push his way into the end zone, that's Tank Bigsby time. So there's nothing to worry about there, but if you want to use an add on him, it might not be a bad idea to have a handcuff in case Etienne gets hurt or starts to struggle. Now let's move to the ads and drops. There were no ads and drops. So let's move to the Jerome Horwitz Purple Dragons. Now, you might be wondering where in the world that name came from. Well, it came from one of my favorite books. And yes, it's a child's book, but Kevin Underpants made a movie about it. Kevin Hart was in it. It's phenomenal. And it's also kid friendly. So if you've got kids and you're watching this, have them watch it. So tra la la. Anyway, we won this week 90 to 81 solely based off the fact that CMC did not play. I know he was supposed to be a late scratch, but Jeff Mason was like, oh, hey, yeah, dude, like I was, I knew a couple days ago I was starting. So, huh, 49ers probably in trouble for that one. Point being, some of the top guys for me included C.J. Stroud, we were talking about his stat line, and James Conner, 50 yards on the ground, 33 yards through the air, and a touchdown. Some of the guys that did not help me as much, <sighs> I didn't start Jaden Reed. Now, why didn't I start Jaden Reed? That was silly. Jaden Reed absolutely could have done something for me. Well, because I started Chris Olave, thinking the Panthers are so bad. Everyone on the Saints, they going to eat. They going to eat. But nope, nope, nope. Chris Olave got me one point. Actually, two weeks ago, we made a trade. We traded away David Montgomery. Hold on, hold on. David Montgomery, I know he's good. But I don't know if he's going to be the same back he was last year. He had double-digit touchdowns last year. There might be more production for Jameer Gibbs this year. So along with David Montgomery, we also trade away Dalton Schultz. And we received Ben Sennett back. And you might be, who is that? Went to Kansas State, drafted by my Redskins. I'm a big fan of him. Wanted him to do well. He got no targets in the first week. But we also got Josh Jacobs. So happy about that. Receiving back out of the backfield, however... There were a few other running backs that got a lot of carries. Not a lot, but got some carries, Emmanuel Wilson, for the uh, Packers. And that's kind of concerning. So definitely going to be looking for Josh Jacobs to get those receptions out of the backfield. Uh, but also, I'm thinking he's going to be a whole heck of a lot more involved this week coming up because of Jordan Love being out, Malik Cunningham, Malik Wilkins. I can't remember what his name was. I know he went to Liberty University. So... He is going to be the quarterback, and I don't know if they trust him dropping back and just chucking the ball. So probably, hopefully, lots of screens, lots of handoffs, lots of dinks and dunks, all to my boy, Josh Jacobs, and he can get a million points for me and let me win. And the last thing we're going to talk about, the Vince McMahon Football Club. This week, unfortunately, we lost 132-92. to Our highest scorer was A.J. Brown with 18.5 points, and then followed by kicker Fairbairn, who had 17 so, could have, should have started Jake Moody, when a guy was a little closer, but overall bad week. Puka Nakua got hurt. He did have four receptions for 40-some-odd yards, so didn't have any eight points. Point for the reception league. Hopefully, he comes back after, what, four weeks on the IL and, you know, helps us get back on track. Also, my tight end game, not as well as I want it to work. Um, Laporta got me 4.5 points. McBride got me 4 points. And Evan Ingram got me 0.5 points. Mike Williams got me 0 points. No receptions. He was strictly a decoy. So that's pretty frustrating. There are no ads and drops for this team. So that actually allows us to run very smoothly into the ads you might should look at as the waiver wire does open up. Some of the top guys, obviously Isaiah Likely. With Mark Andrews coming off of injury, Likely is going to be the likely beneficiary of that recovery time. Now, he is a big body, and he is definitely going to be able to build off what he did last year. Mar Jackson is going to be looking at him because he really is one of the top weapons. Zay Flowers, obviously, as well, but he lost out on the receiving backs. He had J.K. Dobbins, um, Gus Edwards. He still does have Justice Hill and obviously has Derrick Henry, but Derrick Henry is not a pass catcher. So, I foresee Isaiah Likely being the top pick up for this week. Now, some of the other wide receivers you might want to look at. Jameis Williams had a great game. Now, I don't think that's going to happen every week. Amon Ross St. Brown and Laporta definitely did poorly, so that opened up a lot of room for Jameis Williams to do well. Make sure you temper expectations with him. Along with Alan Lazard, Mike Williams was, in my thought, the second guy in line for targets from Mr. Aaron Rodgers. 
That didn't happen because he's still recovering from ACL surgery. So Alan Lazard, who obviously was with Rodgers in Green Bay, was the next beneficiary of all of those targets. Uh, Garrett Wilson is going to be you know, covered by the best cornerback or maybe double covered. So potentially Lazard could duplicate this a week or two here and there. Um, I do foresee him being the second option for Rodgers, regardless of when Mike Williams comes back. Another group of wide receivers I think you should look at, but temper expectations and take all this with a grain of salt, but the entire Rams receiving crew. Tutu Atwell being third of the three. Then Demarcus Robinson, second of the three, but the top, other than Cooper Cup, because we know he's not available, Tyler Johnson. I think Tyler Johnson is going to be the top of the three I just named outside of Cooper Cup. Um, so, you might want to target him. So, running backs you might want to look at. Yes, of course, Mason for the Niners. But, again, if CMC is back, Mason goes to the wayside. Tank Bigsby. Now, again, we talked about this earlier. Is he the guy in the Jaguars offense? No, because ETN is the guy. Bigsby is uh, like the Jamal Williams. Bigsby is the same gash. You know, Bigsby is the, um, well, I guess Jamal Williams again because he's doing that in New Orleans and he did it with the Lions. And actually, he did it with the Packers. Holy cow. So three times this man is vulturing touchdowns. And that's how I see Tank Bigsby doing. Now, is he big? Is he strong? Is he fast? Yes. But ETN is receiving back, so he's going to be the screen guy. He's going to be the run to the outside. Basically, he's the run up the middle guy. So, keep that in mind. Uh, Defensive-wise, whoever's playing the Panthers. There we go. Whoever is playing the Panthers. So, maybe stock up on a few of the NFC South teams. I mean, that right there, that gives you seven more times to play the Panthers. Because they're awful. Well, that's going to do it for the recaps and the suggestions. I hope they helped you. I hope you're able to jump on your waiver wire and put them in. I hope you get some of them, all of them, whoever else. If you have suggestions, let me know. Um, I will obviously be looking at them as well because I want to win a championship and I hope you want to win a championship because in the famous words of Herman Edwards, you play to win the game. This is Jake Cake and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me.